want to know my occupation. I get paid to watch the nation. Roll it. Hold it now. Roland Martin, good morning. Good morning, Tom Sibyl and Jay. Hope all is well with all of you. Uh, lots of things happening in the news. The Supreme Court uh, weighs in on affirmative action, kicks it back. But yesterday, so many eyes and ears focused on the trial in Florida of George Zimmerman and the death of Trayvon Martin. Yesterday was opening statements, and we wanted to get the perspective from retired Judge Kevin Ross. You know him from television. Uh, he plays one on TV, but he's also one in real life. Judge, good morning. Good morning, Roland. How are you? Doing great. Let's jump right to it. First of all, uh, I thought the prosecution uh, was pre- presented a very, very even-keeled and um, uh, aggressive, if you will, opening arguments. But the defense, have you ever in your life, Judge, heard a situation, a murder trial, where the defense opens up with a knock-knock joke? I've never heard it, and it was brilliant. It was brilliant that he did that. How? And the, re- and the reason that I say it was brilliant is because when you look at someone like a John Guy, 30 minutes, he starts off, why is he cursing? Why is he saying, you know, effing punks, these a-holes always get away? Why is he using George Zimmerman's words to haunt him? He's trying to establish second-degree murder. He's trying to establish the elements that the that the state knows are going to be very difficult to prove as it relates to George Zimmerman. They have to prove to pray the mind. They have to prove that this man Zimmerman had no regard to human life. They have to prove ill will, hatred, spite, or evil intent. And so that's why John Guy started with those words, because he has to prove every element. Conversely, Don West, nobody just does things off the cuff in a, in a high-stakes case like this, especially right. in Florida. Because when you look at... Um, these cases in Florida in 2010-2011, out of 1,037 non-capital cases in Florida, 600 of them were settled. Another 115 were dismissed. So typically, if, it would, if it, this case weren't receiving all the attention, this case would have been resolved. Why do I make it a point to say that? Because Don West is a smart guy, and he knows that his client is the bad guy. There's nobody else who's a bad guy. Ergo, I'm trying to follow this, but I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Um, you said it was a brilliant move, but I'm and I'm trying to follow follow you, but I'm just not getting it. Okay, so here's what it comes down to. Yeah. The reason why it was a brilliant move is because instead of us spending all this time talking about George Zimmerman being the bad guy, who's the bad guy that we're talking about this morning? The lawyer we're who, who did the knock knock. John knock. West. Don West is going to go home to his family and be able to have a steak and do all the things. He had to take the, the stench off of Zimmerman. But what does that and, say about the way the jurors felt who were, in essence, the butt of the knock-knock joke? Because what he ended up saying was, don't hold this against my client. But I'm basically going to be this person who's, who's stupid, who you guys are, are offended by. Put all that on me, take it off my client. It was not a coincidence. It wasn't just something off the cuff. Mm -hmm. They spent time figuring out how do they take a little bit of the focus off of Zimmerman, and it has been a brilliant move because that's what everyone's talking about. As a judge, Mm -hmm. what do you make of the judge uh, not allowing the expert testimony as it relates to uh, the phone calls? See, here's what it comes down to. Starting July 1st, I mean, as in next week, Florida is going to have a new standard anyway. It's called the Dalton Standard. And how that works is they're going to have evidence that's closer to the federal rules, which are pretty conservative as it relates to what's admissible. And ultimately what ended up happening was the the prosecution was not able to successfully argue that this information should have come in. In fact, the defense, again, very smart move. They had an FBI person, James Wayman. He said, that the methods that they're using to try to get this evidence in, there's no scientific evidence on it. And once they started saying nobody uses this methodology in terms of trying to identify identify voice. In fact, Trayvon's own father, Tracy Martin, initially said, that's not my son. Mm -hmm. So what they ended up doing was they were saying, do we have what's considered the Fry standard? Can we meet that? The prosecution wasn't able to meet it, because even people in 
that community said, what you all are trying to come up with, this is magic. This is not something that we've ever seen before in Florida. So, so Circuit Court, Court Judge Deborah Nelson, she had to go along with the standard, which right now is the Fry standard, until next week when it's going to change, but it won't go retroactively. Mm. Uh, it is Does going that to be. Make sense what I'm saying, though, about the whole yeah. thing, I, I want to make sure that we're clear about Don West. Had you all even considered that, that there was a reason why he did what he did? No, not until well, you came on. That's why we. That's why we wanted to have you on just yeah. to explain it, because uh, it was for a lot of folks. It was what the heck was that? Judge Kevin Ross, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks for breaking down uh, yesterday's developments in the opening uh, testimony of the George Zimmerman case, the murder of Trayvon Martin. Thanks so much.